All right, we've completed the initial implementation steps. Now it's time to run and debug the application until it works properly. Let's go to the front panel of the application. I note that the run arrow is ready to go. That is, there are no existing syntax errors. I'll type in 19.05 millimeters for the known diameter of the coin. I'll be using a penny for calibration. I'll use the image as the image file base name and then 23 millimeters for the large coin threshold. Up here I'm making these values the default values so that way when I open the VI again these values that I've just typed are preserved. Let's go ahead and hit run. Get a prompt that we need to save the changes to main.vi. Takes a little bit for the compiling and downloading process to continue. And then, okay, error right away. It says invalid region of interest. Now we need to be able to define the ROI on the main image display. What you notice is until there is a valid image inside the image display, you can't define the ROI. So that's a bit of a problem. Let's deal with this in such a way that the user doesn't necessarily have to have the ROI specified. This is how we'll handle that. Right now, if we take a little closer look at what's being produced for the ROI itself, it says that this is a cluster of two elements, a global rectangle and an array of contours. Both of these elements are arrays. What I need to do is detect when those arrays are empty and then use a default value in its place. So I will create a constant for the ROI descriptor and this constant is whatever ROI I had specified earlier when I set up the Vision Assistant script. Let's use just a simple unbundle for the cluster, and here, here you see the two arrays are available. Now here we can test either one of these. Really doesn't matter. I'll just use the bottom one. And this test says, is the array empty or not? And then I can use the select node to use the default ROI if the array is empty. So we'll say for the case where is empty is true, we use the default ROI. But if the array is not empty, we want to use the ROI that's defined on the image display. And then we can pipe that right in for the ROI descriptor. All right, let's see what difference this makes. Again, go ahead and hit run. You'll need to save the VI. And there's some success. We can see the webcam image just fine. All right, let's try taking a look at show analyzed. This is showing the output from the vision script and I'm moving the coin around a little bit. And now I can define the ROI on the image display itself. All right, now from my perspective, this coin is actually upside down. I'm going to stop the VI. Let's come back to the image get state and I will invoke the flip option this will uh, essentially flip the image around. So from my vantage point, the coin will look right side up, both in the image display, as well as, as I'm looking at it visually on my tabletop copy stand. Now let's try taking some measurements on two different coins inside the ROI. It's measuring 142 pixels, and at the moment it says that's 142 millimeters. 
when I click Calibrate, Notice that 142 pixels is now read as 19.05 millimeters. Now I'll slide this coin in underneath the ROI, and you see it's now being reported as 24.2 millimeters. All right, this is working pretty good. Let me save that image to the USB drive. I'm now pulling out the USB flash drive. Try this again just to confirm that it properly handles an absent USB flash drive. Now I'll draw your attention to the images saved indicator. Let's click save image again. One more time. It looks like it's incrementing fine. One of the behaviors I'd like is that the images saved indicator always starts from zero when I rerun the VI. Let's see if this happens. Well, this isn't working properly yet. It's not being reinitialized to zero. Let's try to study why this is the case. The file incrementing happens in the increment file number state. And this state is part of the save image task, which in turn is only invoked when you click save image. The only way images saved will ever change, at the moment anyways, is when we click that Save Image button. Let me show you how you can deal with this in the queued state machine initialization state. Let's find the Invoke node, and then link this to the front panel indicator Images Saved, located right there. Then we choose the method and select Reinitialize to default. Let's get this linked into the error cluster. And now, as part of the startup of the queued state machine, when it passes through this initialization state, it will cause images saved to revert back to zero. Let's give this a try. It always takes a little bit of time for the compiling and deploying to complete. And look right here, images saved has now been set back to zero. Good, we've corrected that problem. Taking one last look around, I notice that the diameter is not being reported properly again. Let me scoot the penny back underneath the region of interest and then calibrate the application again. And we are all set. All right, well done. You have completed your first machine vision application project based on the machine vision app LabVIEW template project. You can congratulate yourself on a job well done.